Welcome back everybody to our second week of the CPQ course. I hope you all are enjoying your Labor Day weekend, getting some self-care in, drinking some water, and taking care of yourselves. In this session, we're going to be talking about the beginning stages of kickoff and discovery with a special guest instructor today. Hi everyone, my name is Varric. I'm a CPQ consultant and stress management resource here at IT Equality. I studied theatrical costume design at the University of Colorado at Boulder. Um, much of my work here focuses on concise and creative solutions to CPQ and interpersonal issues. My long-term life goal is to uh, retire to the middle of nowhere in the countryside with my husband and write cheap dime story adventures. And with that, let's get started. To recap our last meeting's homework assignment, students were expected to introduce themselves in our community, independently review the syllabus, successfully access our Salesforce community, and review the customer kickoff recording and take notes. Some of you have reached out and asked, what is the best way to document and take notes? This question boils down to personal preference. If you are someone who enjoys color coordinating, annotating, alphabetizing, any of that, then do so. I did provide some examples in the next slides, which we will get to shortly, of how you can accommodate that. Some students were also having some issues viewing documentations and recordings we uploaded into the community assignment files, and we are working on correcting that visibility. But in the meantime, we have created public links in the chatter posts for everyone to access. If anyone is still experiencing these issues, please email email us directly so we can provide them to you via email. Lastly, if you cannot make it to our class sessions, we will always provide a recording. However, if you do find yourself not being able to attend enough in order to complete the homework assignments, please let us know so that we can adjust your seating and provide the spot for someone on the wait list. I have a couple of example slides. So right here is a deployment checklist that you could use to keep all of your configuration, any notes, any of that that you do throughout the course. So it kind of organizes it and better preps you for your final. We will provide the deployment checklist template to everyone. And uh, so you'll have that on deck for you. We also have an example of how you can document all these items in an Excel spreadsheet. Excel is highly used in a lot of different tech opportunities, so it's good to become familiarized with that system. The only other thing that Salesforce recommends you using is a change set tool. Internally, Salesforce has a tool called change sets and you can store almost any configuration built throughout the project by building a change set out. For those who are not familiarized with change sets, a change set is a quicker way of deploying metadata and metadata is the custom objects, custom fields that you will be building throughout the org. A little bit of how you can access those change sets. So if you go into your org setup and quick find and type in change sets, you will be brought to those items. As an example, if you built out a change set throughout a project and in that change set, there's one custom pick list field in it. And when you first put that pick list field, it only had three values. But throughout the project, your client was like, oh, I, I would really like us to add a couple more values. You actually end up with six values uh, for that pick list field. The change set will capture those changes automatically without having to re-add the field back into there. It pulls the actual metadata when you upload it. So before that, the change set does have a bookmarked item for it. After you guys have watched the customer kickoff recording, some items that you should have obtained from that call are the SOW details and notes of what we are going to be building throughout the course of the project. So bundles, a discount logic configuration, order examples, contract examples, renewal and amendment contract examples, product examples, an out of box template, installing the package, configuring the layouts and so on. When we get to our design document class, we will elaborate further on what those configurations mean in deeper detail. You also were able to get a visible, visible representation example of what an SOW looks like from a beginner CPQ project. There is also some discussion of the customer giving us a fake login example. Getting login access is always needed and we will be explaining further how you will be logging into your own orgs and using those orgs as the pretend customer org. 
And finally, how to interact with customers during a kickoff call, which we will be discussing how to strengthen those relationships in the course in this course session. So let's get to talking about kickoff and discovery. You may be asking yourself, what is kickoff and discovery? Kickoff refers to the first one or two meetings you will have with your client or customer. During this time, introductions will be made for all team members and their roles, and primary contact points for each team will be established. The client's CPQ documentation homework is due before the first kickoff meeting, typically. Mm -hmm. There's always the potential that the client will not have this done, at which point you may have to have them fill out the remainder of the homework on call. This is why it's typically good practice to plan for a second kickoff meeting as a backup to address the remaining topics, such as determining the client's goals for the project, recapping the SOW deliverables with the client and, and to manage expectations and ensure the client's goals align with scope. And finally, acquiring and confirming login access to the org. Once you obtain access to the project org, which will typically be a sandbox, you can begin the discovery process. When I was first learning about discovery, I thought of it way more complex than what it really is. Discovery is literally that putting all of your findings or what you have discovered from all the existing items in your client's orgs and utilizing those items to see how they would either complement or conflict with the CPQ package installation, or in other cases, any other implementations. This is also the perfect time to obtain all client documentation that you need in order for a successful implementation. So if you have a client who has their products in an Excel sheet or example templates on Google Doc, Ask for those early on so that if you face a customer who is delaying those items to you, it does not conflict with your project timeline. Additionally, by identifying those discoveries from your client's org, you can now architect the design of what you will be configuring throughout the project, which introduces us to the, our design document. We will be covering this item in our next class. Any application of Salesforce involves working with other people, whether you're an in-house worker or a consultant. For that reason, it's important to keep soft relating to interpersonal communication in mind as a part of your process throughout this course and on the job. Kickoff and discovery are a great time to get to know your customer's work habits and plan accordingly for the remainder of the project. This is a time to get to know your client's style of communication. Are they flexible and open to creative solutions? Are they dedicated to a strict timeline? Does the primary contact have authority to make changes? How timely are they with homework, emails, and meeting times? These are all factors that can influence your configuration and planning throughout the entirety of the project. We will be discussing what CPQ homework is next, how it can assist you in your role with this project, and how to finish it when clients can't. CPQ homework refers to any documentation designed for organizing information from the client obtained during kickoff. This documentation is not any type of tool offered within Salesforce. It's simply a personal preference. So you can design any type of document, e.g. a Google Doc template or an Excel template that helps you personally collect that information. The purpose of this document is to allow CPU consultants and architects a detailed guideline of critical project information in the client's own words. Sometimes you'll face situations where clients are unable to answer or refuse to answer certain questions due to confidentiality or become overwhelmed with the questions and using your best soft skills will assist you in these situations. Here's a prime example of what a CPQ homework documentation could look like. The questions on this document have been formulated for the specific example project we are using in this course. If you are looking for different answers from a client in real life scenarios, you would customize your own questions to help you better understand their org. This template will be provided to you with some answers filled out and based off the recording you will be receiving this week, it is your job to go through and fill out the remaining client answers for this CPQ homework. For this week's homework assignments, we're going to be signing up for a Trailhead developer org, which does not have CPQ installed. I did provide a link that meets those requirements, so all you need to worry about is signing up for it. 
You will be drafting an email response example with next steps and an agenda that has the next meeting topics, either for the client as a contracted consultant or an in-house worker. And as discussed, you will be filling out the remaining CPQ discovery homework. Once you are completed with those items, you will post a screenshot of the remaining CPQ discovery homework completed, which some of you have been getting really good at, so good job. Uh, feel free to assist other students who are struggling with this, and you will also be expected to leave kind and respectful feedback to other peers' submissions. You will also be posting a screenshot of your org's installed packages, which I will explain further of how to do that to ensure CPQ does not pre-exist in it. Moving on to the next slide. This is what the developer org signup looks like when you first get in. You would click on this link and it'll navigate you to the signing up area. When you click on that link, it will direct you and you will need to put your name, an email you are actively using, and the remaining of the information. For your username, it does have to be unique, so just keep that in mind. Now, how you would access your installed packages in order to screenshot them is as follows. Once you have signed into your new Trailhead developer org, you're going to navigate to your setup. And from here, you're going to have this little quick link over here. And in the quick find, you're going to type in installed packages, which you will click here. And this is where you would see all of your installed packages. This is the area in which you need to take a screenshot and submit it to in our communities. Next, these are your email examples. I have provided a few different ones here. Please be sure to post these as well in the communities and use your own wording for them. You can definitely use the same formatting and all of that, but again, just get creative, get fun with it, and let's see what you can do with it. If you have any questions since we are not meeting live for this course, you can post those questions in the community and other students can assist or I will frequently be in there to help out as well. Other than that, I hope you all have a fantastic week and I look forward to meeting with you all in live time for our next session.